Hello, and welcome to Art Minutes. I'm Carrie Elkins, Museum Specialist at the Appleton Museum of Art, and this is Roadmap by Janet Fish. This watercolor on paper is a still life scene depicting a couple of black eyed Susans, a handful of goldenrods, a green fruit still attached to a cut branch, and another branch of ripening berries. These plant clippings are set on top of a map that is mostly unfolded and splayed over a grassy area, with a spattering of pink wildflowers in the lower left corner and a single daisy peeking out at the edge of the map on the right. Janet Fish was born in Boston in 1938 to a family of artists and grew up in Bermuda from the age of 10, an experience that Fish attributes her interest in and style of bright light and vivid colors. She studied sculpture and printmaking at Smith College with Leonard Baskin, where she graduated in 1960 before attending Yale University for her bachelor's and master's degrees in fine art. Abstract expressionism was the prevailing movement of the 1960s, but Fish turned away from the style. In the summer of 1962, Fish attended the Skowhegan School of Painting and Sculpture in Maine, and was encouraged by her teacher and visiting critic Alex Katz to paint landscapes when she was struggling with the direction of her art. Fish is known for her incredibly detailed, large-scale, still-life paintings, with rich colors and use of light that is refracted, mostly through the depiction of glass or in other reflective objects like mirrors, bubbles, or plastic-wrapped grocery store produce. What's interesting about this particular work is the lack of her iconic translucent subject matters. Yet we still see how fish plays with light. The stark white of the map and shadows created by the plants on top of the map as well as in the folds of the map indicate the strong presence of direct sunlight. The vibrant yellows of the flowers practically glow. The speckles of white in the flora of the background glitter and the bouncing of light appears in the lighter shades of green. Fish once said in an interview, The subject is the light and the way it moves around within the still life. What I'm trying to do in all of my paintings is create a reality, which is defined by those elements that I think make something seem alive. It is a kind of energy that I see in things. Many of Fish's paintings have a bit of whimsy to them, a snapshot of time. There is a sense of movement in this scene as if the map is floating atop the ground and a breeze could shift the arrangement at any moment. Generally, flowers have meaning attributed to them, but for fish, it's less about their meaning and more about their individual characteristics and how they can be arranged in relation to other objects. Fish has said, I work to present a situation in which things are interrelated and connected through a flow of movement, light, and color from one form to another. There is also a level of technical mastery to this piece, not just in color, form, and light, but in terms of the specific medium. Watercolor can be a difficult medium. An artist has to plan ahead, be patient, and not overwork a piece. Watercolor is the only medium that has to preserve the white of the paper from the start. An artist has to build color from light to dark. So how the colors are mixed and layered is important, especially since the first layers have to be completely dry. We see this in the brown shadow on the bottom of the green fruit. It has a red tint, accomplished by the application of a dark cool red over the warm yellow green of the fruit, resulting in a realistic and natural looking shadow. Thank you for listening. We look forward to sharing more about our collection with you in the next Art Minutes. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram.